Hey people of God, beautiful people of God, I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, forgive me for not getting back to emails. I've just been going through my own little things right now, but eventually I will. I still love you. Stay blessed. Um, this is what God wants me to read. And obviously, I hope you take it up with fasting and praying or, you know, asking God and getting the revelation from him. And I hope you're being wise in this time. And I just want to share something also with you guys. For the last, I'll say, two months, not two months, um, about two to three weeks, God has been, like, keeping, keeps taking me to Joseph's story. Seven years um, plenty and seven years famine. Like this desolation that is coming, it's going to be so severe on these rich countries that there's going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And like these rich countries are going to be worse than third world countries that they help with food and aid when they're in war. They're going to actually need food and aid. Um, and financial support so I just wanted to share that with you guys and I hope you do your research and your learning with God concerning the, that and concerning just basically how things are going to change in the world um, considering the war and um, last year no, I think two years now. It could almost be a, a, about two years. I had a video and God told me to share that with you about the what I saw. The whirlwind when he changed the soup he changed the physical realm, so the supernatural realm and the the spiritual manifested into this physical world into this physical realm so everything was open and like you know the bible keeps talking about the whirlwind and the whirlwind will pass and the wicked it shall be no more and um in that vision when the whirlwind passed when i like i basically was walking down the street like usually when i walk i do my morning walks with god and i I'll be fasting sometimes and I'll be singing and minding my business and then he'll tell me turn on your phone talk to the people on YouTube and that I have something to, to tell them and I'll do it but in this vision I wasn't doing that I, I wasn't I was just walking I was walking with God and then the whirlwind happened and the street he turned the street into to, to grass, to a fruitful, like a fortress. Um, the houses that were on the sidewalk, how the houses, he turned them into trees. Trees came right out of the roots of the house and turned the house into a tree. And God was just changing everything on the street in like an instant. And then while I was walking, there was me and there was a man across the street and me and him were just amazed at what was going on around us. And then while that was happening, there was a giant that walked past, a huge giant with his head cut off, like a, a, a headless giant. And I said, Father, how am I going to get home? Because the, the street the, that I was walking on, the road, God turned it into like grass and it had like like it was all broken apart like and he was just changing it and it was like lifting up and I'm like father how do I get home and he said fly and then I fl then I had powers and I flew right to my house so um with that being said it's gonna be it's gonna happen so unexpected um God's natural supernatural events that he's gonna do I don't know when he's gonna do it obviously um I don't know that, but given the events that are happening, it should be wise to 
always keep yourself connected to God so he can always give you foresight, insight, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the things that are going to happen and how he's going to do what he's doing, right? It's not, I'm not doing it, he's doing it, right? So anything we want to know how God's doing his work, we should ask him. With that being said, I love you guys and I'm just going to share this what he wants me to read. And this is, we're in the Book of Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 3, verse 1. The works and the designs and the purposes of God cannot be frustrated, neither can they come to naught. For God does not walk in crooked paths. And you remember God says, I want to make every crooked thing straight, and I'll break the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. So he told you he's going to make the crooked places straight. And he's going to turn the valleys into hit the hills into valleys and things like that. You I, I, Don't quote me on the last part. I think I'm a little bit wrong. But yeah, you understand what I'm talking about. You can go to that scripture. For God does not walk in crook paths. Neither does he turn to the right hand nor to the left. Neither does he vary from that which he has said. Therefore, his paths are straight and his course is one eternal round. Remember, remember, it is not the work of God that is frustrated, but the work of men. For although a man may have many revelations and have power to do many works, yet if he boasts in his own strength and set at naught the counsels of God and follows after the dictates of his own will and carnal desires, he must fall and incure the vengeance of a just God upon him. Behold, you have been entrusted with these things, but how strict were your commandments, and remember also the promises which were given, which were made to you, if you did not transgress them. And behold, how oft you would have transgressed the commandments and the laws of God, and have gotten gone on in the persuasions of men. For behold, you should not have feared man more than God. Although men set at naught the counsels of God and despise his words, yet you should have not yet you should have been faithful, and he would have extended his arm and supported you against all the fiery darts of the adversary, and he would have been with you in every time of trouble. So you know when people go through their trials and tribulations and life gets hard for them, um they they go after the persuasions of men. They follow the counsels of men and women instead of fearing the word of God and doing what is right. And basically, if they, if they, if they were tough and brave and strong enough and faithful to God and didn't be persuaded with men and women on how they viewed them and what they thought or what they say and what they do to them, God would have supported them and helped them through all the fiery darts of the adversary. He would have been with them because he will never leave them nor forsake them. And those trials and those battles and those tribulations that they went through, that is supposed to, those are tests. Those are battles going up a level to become stronger. Just like the Mario game. You had to go up a level. You had to beat another boss. You went from little Mario to big Mario. So people who are running away from the trials and tribulations and hardships that happen in their life, they don't really go through any life experience to learn how to be stronger, learn how to be braver, learn how to overcome. How are you going to be an overcomer if you haven't overcome anything? You haven't overcome any challenges. You haven't overcome any obstacles. You haven't overcome any problems. You haven't overcome any trials. You haven't overcome any tribulations. You haven't overcome any fights and battles. You haven't overcome any spiritual warfare. How are you going to get stronger? You have to. How are you going to be an overcomer if you keep being persuaded by men and women on what they think about you? Or what they'll say. Because you got to be stronger to have tougher skin to not care what people say. So you had to grow. You get me? And with that being said, as well, what God is saying, like, you, 
no matter what people did to try to do to you, he would have extended his arm out to you and supported you against all the fiery darts of the adversary. And he would have been with you in every time of trouble. And um, basically, this is what God wants me to s speak about. And this part is about someone else, but I still need to read it. Behold, thou art Joseph, and thou was chosen to do the work of the Lord. But because of transgression, if thou art not aware, thou will fall. So people, remember, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So if you don't know your transgressions, you, you are capable of falling. But remember, God is merciful. Therefore, repent of that, that which thou hast done, which is contrary to the commandment which I give you. And thou art still chosen and are again called for the work. Except thou do this, thou shalt be delivered up and become as other men and have no more gift. So you know that you committed wrong. You've broken God's law, statutes, and commandments. You need to repent. So go, and go back to the work that God gave you. Or you'll lose your gift. And when thou deliverest up that which thou hast given thee sight and power to translate, thou deliverest up that which thou was sacred in the hands of a wicked man, who has set at naught the counsels of God, and has broken the most sacred promises which were made before God, and has depended upon his own judgment and boasted in his own wisdom. So wicked men, they don't want to hear any counsel about God, any counsel from God, because they stay on their own counsels, and they depend on their own judgment, and they boast in their own wisdom. And this is the reason that thou has lost thy privileges for a season. So when men listen to other men, God will take away their gifts and he'll take away their privileges for a season until they repent. For thou has suffered the counsel of thy director to be trampled upon from the beginning. People suffer from other people's counsels when it leads them away from the counsel of God. Nevertheless, my work shall go forth for as much as the knowledge of a Savior has come unto the world through the testimony of the Jews, even so shall the knowledge of a Savior come unto my people. And that's all I'm supposed to read, beautiful people of God. I hope you stay blessed. And um, basically, the purposes of God cannot be frustrated. The work of God cannot be frustrated, but the work of men. The counsel of God cannot be frustrated, but the counsels of men can. All right? So remember, remember that it is not the work of God that is frustrated, but the work of men. For although a man may have many revelations and have power to do many mighty works, yet if he boasts in his own strength, and set at naught the counsels of God, and follow after the dictates of his own will and of carnal desires, he must fall and incur the vengeance of a just God upon him. Stay blessed, beautiful people.